What's up guys, All right, we are here at Papadakis Racing on a Saturday. Big thanks to Sean over here for letting us in. We had an issue with our lathe last night where the transmission for threading, uh, the shaft on it was bent so it kept popping out uh, so we wouldn't be able to thread something with confidence and probably pop out and ruin the part halfway done. So we're down here using Steph's very nice lathe. Dom's getting it set up right now so that we can make all the parts uh, and these are going to be for the scavenge oil pump, the uh, inlet oil pump, the two uh, inlet water pumps uh, so that we can start building those lines and have those all dialed in and ready to go when we get the cooling system and oil system all set up. So uh, they're all going to be custom done. We have two and a half inch aluminum and inch and seven eighths. Oil system is going to be all dash 12 and the cooling system is all going to be dash 16. Let's get to it, man. So this is the first time I've ever seen uh, threading on a lathe before. So you gotta set everything up pretty dialed. This is the threading chart right here. And we are, we are threading uh, AN fitting thread, which is uh, 12 threads per inch. So you have to kind of go by this keyway and set all of this stuff up down here in order to make the proper thread. And then you auto set it so that when you feed it, you then have to feed it at the right point on this dial to start the proper thread at the proper time, I guess. This is all new to me, but we're going to watch Dom do it. Watch it get Dom spec. looking clean but it's very close it's pretty much the whole full 120 depth is now 112 112 it's yeah. still too tight yeah that's close very close all right hopefully the final cut here on the threads Yeah, it's really nice. It's like, there's no play. Should be perfect. Okay, now. Bounce back. There we go, boys. Dash 12. Ready to rock. Yeah, nice. We only needed one of the dash 12s and this is gonna be for the fitting coming off the scavenge pump on the passenger side of the Judd. Uh, now we need four dash 16s, which Dom is cutting now. And uh, two of those are going on the front of the engine for the water outlets. And then we need two for the water pump inlets. Taper boy. All right, that's a wrap here at Papadakis Racing. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean, letting us spend about four or five hours here on a Saturday. Cutting his day off. 
No, not for the So we got part way uh, mostly done, so we got the bases done. We just gotta come down here on a work regular work day and thread the uh, thread the ends for everything, but uh, we got these two threaded and this is basically how they're gonna get cut off and then we will Dom's gonna machine these into the pattern that they need to be machined into. So we're gonna go back to race service and uh, get on the mill and start doing some uh, more trimming. All right, we're back here, race service. Dom is jamming on the one that he was able to finish and put threads on. So right now he's got the, he had to cap the threads with an AN cap and then bolt it into the chuck on the thread side so that he can now cut, trim, and then eventually put it in the mill to uh, trim the base on it or cut the base on it. She O-rings. So what'd you have to do and why? It's basically the bolt pattern is so close for a dash 12, you don't even have clearance for a cap head screw. So it's like the screw actually interferes with the threads because their bolt pattern is so tight. So I don't know if they originally ran a dash 12 on there. Maybe they ran a 10 or something. And they, the bolt pattern's still the same, and they went to a 12, but yeah, basically you so have to- So you had to make a- You have to make clearance. Clearance. On just the threads to uh, actually put Stick the cap it. screw in there. Otherwise you can't even get the screw in there. Yeah. It's crazy. Looks good though. All right, boys, done. This is the Dash 12 fitting coming off of the scavenge pump. Dom just finished shaping it. There's actually a lot of work involved in just this one piece. What do you think? Probably a good three hours, two hours? Yeah. Dang. Looks mate. We probably have to, we'll have to make it so there's not, or try not to. No, we probably have to make like a clamp or something to hold it somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, so it doesn't vibrate because it can't be like yanking on this fitting. That is a wrap on the custom fittings. Dom knocked it out of the park as usual. Big thanks to Papa Doctors Racing for letting us use the lathe. This is the scavenge or the oil outlet. Uh, so this fitting took the longest because it had a uh, few more steps involved than these ones. So O-ring the back, uh, had to trim this thing down. And then the bolts themselves were so close to the threads that Dom actually had to run a end mill down this to cut into the threads in order to clearance it for the bolts to go through. So this was actually really intense for him to do. I've never seen uh, a, some of these steps, so it was pretty cool to watch. And that was the first one that he did. And then these ones were easier. This is the water inlet here for the water pump, which is right here. And then we come around the front, and this is the water exits on the, on the top here. Uh, these were also hard to shape, because uh, it was really hard for Dom to get the, me the proper measurements to shape this flange. Uh, so those took a little while and we come back around here, another, the second water pump inlet right here. So pretty much the same as the other one. And then this is the inlet oil pump right here, uh, which was also hard to get to just because, uh, Dom couldn't get like the caliper to do the measurements in here very well. So, and it just took a little bit longer than he normally would take, but everything came out perfect. And, uh, now we can, you know, this is dash 12 dash 16. 
So we're pretty much ready to rock. So when this motor gets ready for plumbing, we're all set and ready to go. This is the start of us trying to convert the Judd engine to drive-by-wire. Uh, currently has throttle slides. And everything runs in the valley here underneath. Uh, so it's driven off of a cable and we wanna make it drive by wire. So we actually purchased this throttle body uh, from EFI Hardware, which they take the guts out of a Bosch throttle body and make a nice uh, case for it out of billet. And now you can drive, or convert, this makes it a lot easier to convert something to drive by wire. Um, so we're hoping that this will do the job. Um, the pull on the slides right now are, is super heavy because of the springs that are on it. So we have to find a fine balance of a linear spring that has a little bit easier of a pull or a compression. I think that's how you would explain that. And we're gonna work with John Reed on that so that we don't see any faults that come up um, and turn the throttle body off. Uh, we've had that issue before with some of the Bosches. So this is definitely gonna be a work in progress, something that hasn't been done on this engine before, I don't believe. So for us, we are gonna do the best we can, but right now we're gonna take the top part of the engine off, take the intake tray off, uh, the stacks, and then get to the valley and see how we can fit this into the center valley area of the Judd engine. So we're gonna to try to stick that throttle body back here in this area and then pull down on the throttle body arm, which is right here. The one big problem that we do have is that the throttle body sweep is 80 millimeter and the slide throttles on the engine are 86. So we're gonna to have to figure, we're gonna to have to do some lever figuring out of sorts. I'll let Dom figure that one out though. We just need to connect this arm on the throttle body to this here and get them to open up, open up 100% of the way. Don figured out what he wants to do for the bracket to mount this throttle body, so here we go. the two thankfully the motor had two little bosses right here so we just Dom just drilled and tapped these things to m8125 now he's gonna make the plate also do some modification to the throttle body itself got to throw a, a big chamfer on it uh, so it has a little clearance in here and then it can sit a little lower and then uh, finish this thing off Dom has the bracket done, you can see it under here. That bolts to the two bosses that were tapped and then the throttle body is now bolted to that. Uh, and everything is very tight, as you can see the tolerances. I had to put the big chamfer on here and then do a little bit more clearancing on the bottom right here. Uh, it's all looking good. And now all we have to do is focus on the linkage part and make sure that the throttle slides open and close on a good plane so we're probably going to drop this down a little bit and then connect this to the actual throttle body linkage and see if that works out and then we'll screw around with the springs 
Drive-by-wire system is officially finished. So we had to order a new rod end and Dom had to make some new spacers in here. This basically comes off of the Judd throttle slide linkage and goes to the arm on an EFI hardware drive-by-wire uh, actuator. And uh, this is fit solid in here, so everything is good. And we actually had to use, uh, we had a decent amount of time testing return springs and we ended up using some springs from Dom's RC car truck shocks as the return springs. And we think they work perfectly because it has really good return on them, but I don't think it's heavy enough where the throttle body will not, won't be able to pull the slides all the way open. So a uh, couple of things that we had to get over. Obviously we haven't tested this yet in practice. So uh, we're hoping that everything's all good. Uh, we think it will be. We talked to John. He thinks it will be because he's actually have a decent amount of power uh, throttle bodies. So it should be enough to pull this thing open and, and modulate it. So I want to tell you guys the reason why we went with a drive-by wire system is so that we can tune in the flat shift and the downshift so that we can rev match on the downshifts a lot faster, uh, which would be a lot easier for drivability on the racetrack. And then flat shifts, obviously being able to shift as fast as you can without taking your, your foot off of the gas pedal. So you can just stay in the gas and keep grabbing gears and basically the throttle body and uh, the uh, timing is basically what's gonna help you shift the transmission. So uh, that's gonna help a ton on the racetrack. All right, guys, firewall time, baby. So we're cutting this 050, 5052, 4 by 10 shot for the firewall. Dom's got the templates done. We're somewhat done. Hit it? Yeah. Like butter. That was nice. So that is the base of the firewall that Don just finished now and moving on to the next stage of the firewall right now. So Dom has the bottom and mid plate for the firewall done. Working on the top portion now, which is going to be the most intricate because we have to put a bend in the top of it so, so that it hugs the top of this area here and gives us a complete seal from the cab.
right, guys, here it is. Dom is officially done fitting the firewall. Came out really sick. Everything's super tight. Next thing Dom is gonna do is put some bead roll action in this, uh, which we don't have a bead roll, so we're gonna have to run the Papadakis Racing since they have a nice one. Um, Dom will put a sweet design in it to strengthen it and also make it look a lot more finished. Um, then we're gonna fill in this panel down here to seal up the underbody. It's looking good. Dom just had to fill in this little gap with a plate just to make this all on the same surface so we can lay a nice flat piece to seal this all up. So just a quick little guy. We're here at Papadakis Racing where we have to borrow another tool. Thanks again, Steph. Uh, Dom is gonna finish the firewall for the form of the Supra by bead rolling. And Dom has the designs already laid out on all the sheet metal. And uh, let's get to it. This one's gonna stay plain for now because Dom has something special he wants to do, but we haven't quite sorted it out just yet. So that's the only one not bead rolled or doesn't have a design in it for now. All right, last one going in. Whee! Friggin' sick that came out. Damn, I know, dude. Come around to the interior. What? Well, firewall came out sick. Dom, like I said, was leaving his panel clean, and then he came up with this idea and decided to kind of surprise me of putting this Toyota logo right here, like you see on the back of uh, a lot of pickup trucks. Uh, which came out really sick, so he didn't really show me how he made it or I would have filmed it. I think he did that on purpose so that nobody would kind of know how he did it. Also, although I'm sure a lot of you metalworking guys out there know exactly how he did this, but it came out super dope. Couldn't have asked for anything better. All the other bead roll stuff really looks cool. I like how he kind of made it look like a factory stamped metal for the bead roll. Everything's tight, everything's like nice and sealed. We'll end up putting a little bit of seam sealer around all the edges after the thing gets painted and we do final uh, install of everything. So um, one step closer, baby. Boom. That looks sick. 